really come to the fore in the India Alliance. And for that, I'd also like to bring in all of our reporters joining us on this broadcast. We've got from the national capital getting us the inside track of what was discussed, Rahul Gautam. Pramod Madhav joins me live from Chennai on the DNK and their role really in the India Alliance. Rohit Singh getting us exclusive news breaks on the JDU and RJD uh, from Patna. We've got Samad Srivastava joining us live from Lucknow on Akhilesh Yadav. We're also being miffed to the possibility of BSP joining this alliance. And finally, also Mani Jeet Segal getting us all the updates from Chandigarh on how AAP at this point is refusing any sort of seat sharing deal with the Congress. I want to first focus on what happened between Nitish Kumar and DMK. Now, this was the information that we picked up that Nitish Kumar was giving his speech in Hindi. And uh, T.R. Balu was seated there, the DMK MP, along with him was Chief Minister M.K. Stalin. They were having a hard time really understanding what Nitish Kumar is saying, so they requested Manoj Jha of RJD to ensure there was a translation. So Manoj Jha went up to Nitish to request the same. Nitish lost to school and said, we live in Hindustan. Everyone should know Hindi. Hindi is our national language. Now, this is a comment that simply DMK has opposed to the nail repeatedly. At every given chance, at drop of a hat, they've said, stop Hindi imposition. And yet when this happened, when Nitish Kumar said that there will be no translation, Hindi, everyone should know we live in Hindustan, there wasn't a peep from the DMK. The DMK MP chief minister sat there and allowed the speech to go on in Hindi. It's obviously led to a lot of questions about obviously differences also on the issue of language and whether the DMK softened their stand somehow on the issue of Hindi imposition, which they've raised repeatedly uh, on several fronts against the central government. Rohit Singh got us those details of exactly what transpired in the India meet. Uh, Rohit, it was Nitish Kumar who was speaking in Hindi and he refused to allow any sort of translation, knowing full well that the DMK you know, has taken on the stand uh, against Hindi imposition, saying that if we don't know the language, ensure we're accommodated. That clearly didn't happen in this meeting. Well, Akshita, DMK may be uh, against Hindi, but uh, Nitish Kumar is not. And how much he is averse to English language is well known to everyone. In the last few months, we have seen several instances in Patna uh, and many places in Bihar wherever Nitish Kumar is go has been going at how he has literally expressed his displeasure at officials, people who speak in English at, pub at, a, at any event or even at any government function. So Nitish mm -hmm. Kumar has... Uh, literally expressed his displeasure at that. And yesterday when he was speaking in Hindi and when T.R. Balu uh, asked for a translation from uh, Manoj Jha, that really irked Nitish Kumar and uh, maybe that perhaps uh, could uh, one of the reasons behind that could also be the fact that Nitish Kumar, uh, since he has been sidelined in the Indi alliance and he has not been yeah. given any kind of a top post about which there has been speculations for the last few days that he might be made the convener of this uh, Indy Alliance and it's been like four meetings that have taken place but still nothing big for Nitish Kumar uh, uh, that is happening and that is uh, perhaps this could also be one of the reasons why Nitish may be annoyed and that is why he uh, expressed his displeasure at uh, T.R. Balu uh, over the, his him. Uh, questioning him why he was speaking in Hindi and asking mm -hmm. for a translation. So and that is why when he reprimanded T.R. Balu yeah. and said that you should be knowing Hindi and Hindi uh, is the language of the Hindustan. And Achita. the fact is that, you know, when this entire conversation happened, and let me bring in Pramod Madhav also on this. Pramod, the fact is that when this conversation happened and Nitish Kumar said, you know, everyone should know Hindi, there was no objection raised by the DMK to that comment. They didn't storm out of the meeting. They agreed there was no translation that was given for them of what Nitish Kumar said or for that matter what other leaders said in Hindi. And this doesn't all go well for the DMK and their image, you know, because they've constantly raised this issue of Hindi imposition. And here they are sitting in a meeting where Hindi is being spoken with no sort of accommodation for DMK leaders who don't understand the language. It absolutely is unbelievable, Akshita, that DMK, actually the leaders of DMK were there even after this issue occurred because DMK, for one thing, will not agree that in Hindi is a national language. DMK has constantly said it is only an official language and any kind of such word is considered as imposition. Not just just two, three days ago, there was an issue where a person from Tamil Nadu was apparently stopped by a CRPS official and uh, he has said that Hindi is a national language. Immediately, Chief Minister MK Stalin and the Sports Minister Udhanidhi Stalin condemned the issue and he, they also tagged uh, CRPF headquarters asking Correct. them to take against action against the concerned officer. However, such an issue has occurred 
inside the Indy bloc and we don't see any kind of opposition. In fact, we earlier spoke to the organization secretary, TK Ilangowen, and when we put forward this question, he said that it is a minor issue. It was a kind of not a kind of a conventional meeting and there were no translators. And he only questioned back what would Nitish Kumar do if he goes to Bengal or Tamil Nadu. He would definitely need a translator and that is what we sought for. We didn't see any kind of opposition or condemning against Nitish Kumar's mm -hmm. such a comment, Akshita. But if only that point was put forth in the India meet as well, how would Mr. Nitish Kumar manage if he travelled to Tamil Nadu, if the entire meet, everyone was speaking in Tamil? Wouldn't he have sought a translator? Wouldn't that have been provided to him? That, unfortunately, wasn't an argument put forth in the meet yesterday. I'd like to thank Pramod Rohit. I request you to stay on with me because we're going to continue focusing on the Lalu Nitish issues as well. Let's shift to the other big difference that cropped up in this meeting. That is Mamta versus Congress. Now, Mamta Banerjee put forth several views in this meeting. One was, she said that as far as the battle for Varanasi is concerned, where the Prime Minister is the elected representative, she wants Priyanka Gandhi to take on uh, Prime Minister Modi directly head on in Varanasi. Not just that, she also said that for the last many months, the reason we've seen delays in any sort of decision being taken by the India Alliance is because of the Congress. She's saying that Congress has wasted six months of time without doing any preparations for the 2024 elections. So she's put the onus also largely on the Congress to figure out the seat sharing deal for Bengal, which is going to be no walk in the park because they'll have to figure out how much TMC will get, which is Alliance chair essentially, and how much the Congress will be okay with. And Mamta has also set a deadline of January 15th, saying, look, by now, by January 15th, come up with some out-of-the-box ideas to take on the BJP in the 2024 battle. So it's interesting to see how Mamta, while proposing that Malikarjun Kharge be the PM face, is also clearly putting the onus on the Congress, saying you need to buck up to ensure that we have a chance. There are also questions about whether with Kharge being projected as the PM face by Mamta, she's kind of trying to also uh, sideline the Gandhis by also saying that Priyanka should take on Prime Minister Modi directly in Varanasi. And in just about 24 hours since the meeting, already the left is taking on Mamta Banerjee over the seat sharing deal talks that are happening in Bengal, saying clearly that we need to be aware of people who will sink this boat. Now, this is the left CPIM taking a jibe, saying that in every state there are some parties which are powerful and we need to be able to understand that. They've even accused Mamta Banerjee and BJP of being in an alliance, as bizarre as it gets, considering that the left very clearly is also part of the India alliance. You've got the CPIM saying that Mamta and the BJP are allies, as bizarre as it gets. पूरे देश में बीजेपी को हराने के लिए हम सब लोग कोशिश करेंगे लेकिन जो बीजेपी के साथ थे बीजेपी के साथ हैं या बीजेपी के साथ जाएंगे उसके बारे में होशियारी बरतना पड़ेगा और ऐसे फरिज भी है जो एक तरफ इंडिया के बैठक में जाते हैं दूसरे दिन मोदी भी जाके बोलते हैं दादा कि तुम भालो खराब कुछ मन को बनना तो ऐसे एजेंट प्रोवोकेटर से भी संभल के रहना चाहिए ये जो खारगे जी का नाम उछाला गया ये जो 30 तारीख को 31 तारीख को अल्टीमेटम दिया जा रहा है ये सब उसी का हिस्सा है जो लोग नाव में चढ़े तो हैं लेकिन नाव नदियां पार करके ताकि घाट में जाए उसके बजाय नाव के अंदर ही तलाकतुम तैयार हो जाए उसकी कोशिश कर रहे हैं let me bring in Rahul Gautam on this broadcast. Rahul, uh, keeping aside all of the differences over the seat sharing really that's playing out in Bengal already, even before there's any sort of deal that's been finalized, Mamta Banerjee seems to be largely putting pressure uh, on the Congress here as far as the India Alliance and their success chances are concerned. She seems to be saying that, look, a lot of the hard work needs to be done by the Congress. And there will be many who speculate on whether Mamta Banerjee is trying effectively to ensure that the Congress is largely also beyond the Gandhis. Absolutely, Akshita. And uh, uh, you know, there has been constant bickering uh, you know, from uh, India Alliance parties that how Congress party is delaying things as far as, uh, uh, you know, preparations uh, in a run-up for Lok Sabha polls are concerned. In fact, uh, yesterday also, uh, TMC sources clearly indicated to Congress party, uh, 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 you know, TMC leaders that uh, they should expedite uh, things given the fact that there have already been 170 days 
since India bloc was pledged by 28 political parties. This meeting, that fourth meeting, is also happening after a long gap of 80 days. So it's better that we should expedite things. In fact, yesterday only uh, uh, they set a deadline of 31st of December, which is now we are learning has been uh, extended till 15th of January. And you can say that it is the uh, impact of uh, yesterday's uh, meeting that as we speak, Rahul Gandhi, Malik Arjun Kharge, Congress uh, President, they all are meeting leaders from Bengal Congress. Now, uh, primarily, TMC is accusing Congress for two things. Uh, that uh, uh, on one hand, there has been already a delay uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, you know establishing an ag agenda for this upcoming uh, Lok Sabha polls. What are they going to be slogans? Correct. We are going to you know hold political rallies. And second is this that Congress party is yet to take a decision that whether they're going to do an alliance with left parties okay. or with TMC. Remember, in 2019, Congress party forged an alliance with left parties. Yeah. And I can, uh, this is what we've been uh, given to understand, that there's not going to be an alliance of all three parties, primarily Congress, okay. left, or Mamta, uh, you know, Banerjee. So clearly, so it's uh, you can expect really that to see what will play out in difficult. Bengal. But what's clear is that Mamta is also putting largely the onus of the Congress to ensure that the India alliance is a success.